Okay, the subject of this video is going to be, or the subject of it is, modifying your receiver from your Luan Soul uh, Loba controller so that it'll fit inside of the the uh, chest of our David series fighting robots. So your chest is not going to have this opening. So I made a little modification to make it look like the uh, Gypsy Danger Robot from Pacific Rim, if you guys have seen that movie. Uh, so the speaker just conveniently had the little swirl that the uh, that the nuclear engine has in that robot. So I just I thought it would be cool to just do that modification to the to the chest. Now this is a Rev D. So. Uh, if you guys go on the resource page, you'll find the files to print the RevD, and that's the latest one that we're that we're using. So I'm just going to pull off the lower torso part. So this is where the legs go. So you can see I've already uh, I've already attached the servo horn. We might go to a metal servo horn in the future if that causes any problems. But uh, for now, this one looks like it will handle the, the torque so everything just goes together just like that but we're gonna remove this um, so that we can get into the chest and see why we're making the modification so I'm gonna just briefly show you what we're starting with so this is it. all the parts are gonna be inside the chest except for the battery the battery is gonna be attached to the back of the lower so but we're gonna have all the other components inside but I'm I'll show you that in a second first we're gonna look at this is the receiver that basically this is used to connect your controller so your hand controller this receiver plugs into your control board right at this connector and it connects your hand controller to your servo controller which is on your robot so that's the bridge between you and your robot so what we're gonna do is so this is a bulk, very bulky uh, thing as you can see here we're gonna take this apart we're gonna take the insides of this and make it so that it fits inside of the chest and I'll show you what's inside there. And this is a very tight fit, so it's gonna take me. Okay, so you see, this is what uh, in the parts you'll see. There's a clavicle. This is it. This is what can, connects your shoulders to uh, the rest of the body. So setting that aside. So here, what you see inside is this is you won't have this part. This is a power meter that I'm adding just um, to fine-tune our power so this is gonna go here but this cavity will be used if you have an audio board I haven't received mine yet I've ordered it but it hasn't come in the audio board will go here in this cavity right under your left arm servo and your speaker will connect to that and you'll have some wires coming out of here so you can see the servo wire ports right there they'll come out of there and plug right into your board on the back so your board is going to be on the back like so so, so all of these wires will come out this way except for the controller interface wire that will come out, the, uh, out of the top there here you have your buck converter takes your your 7.2 voltage takes it down to 5.5 uh, to 6 volts for the rest of your servos to use so you don't want to burn out your servos too quickly so we're dropping down the voltage from the 7.2 to to uh, down to 5.5 to 6 volts so that's what that guy does and that guy sits right under your right arm servo and you want to have the potentiometer facing this way so in case you have to make any adjustments you can still reach in there behind the servo and I'll show you how the servo fits into there so 
the right arm servo is just basically going to be right over that like so so you can see you can you, there's plenty of plenty of room to reach that potentiometer and make voltage adjustments there same thing with the other side so once you have your audio board and everything in there uh, the servo is basically gonna keep everything in place once you get that in there so that leaves us with the space that we're going to set the receiver into which is the remaining space at the back across here so this space at the back across here as you can see this will not fit in there so this next section of the video I'm gonna show you how to remove this from the case move these wires onto the PC board that's in here so that it will fit neatly into that space Now that you know how everything fits into the chest cavity, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to modify your receiver so that it will fit the same way that everything else fits in there, nice and nice and spacious, right? So it's just one screw at the back, and you just work this off. It's, that's the only thing that's holding this together is that one screw. So, you can just pull this cover off, and you can see the PC board in there. Have a little antenna on this side. There's a processor, and then there's a transmitter on there, or uh, should I say, a receiver transmitter is in the hand controller. You can just pop the light, the light pipes off. There are two indicator LEDs. Once we get connected, we won't need to look at those, so we can just get rid of light pipes as well this whole assembly comes out of there so now it's out of the case so now what we want to do is get rid of this bulky part here and that is that's fairly straightforward what we're going to do is unsolder these pins here pull these pins out this way and then we're going to solder these wires directly to the board so if you're looking at the board you can see on here there's a fairly generously sized is that is that a word right um, there's a generous area for us to solder these wires back on there so we should have no problem just taking these wires cutting here stripping them back and soldering them down here so <clears throat> we're gonna start by just going on this side and just take a wire cutter and cut on there cut the pins loose there that'll make it easier for you to pull the pins out from the other side as you can see there one of the pins wasn't even wasn't even soldered very well so we would have probably had to go, have gone in here and re-soldered that pin so you can see it's kind of loose this is how it came from manufacturer like everything else has been pretty good so far but that wasn't even really soldered in there very well you can see there's just blobs of solder on there but anyway we're gonna fix that up make sure you remember what the orientation for all of this was so you can see here uh, the side with the two white wires the two white wires are close to each other so you can see there that's our orientation there and if you have to make a mark for yourself um, that is is a good idea so I'm just gonna take a marker and mark where my red wires are so I'm just making a mark here yes I know it's orange <coughs> So I'm just going to make a mark on the red wire side. Now when you cut these wires, they're going to stay more or less in the, in, in the shape that they are. Uh, so we're not going to worry too much about that. So. <clears throat> so there you go. 
now we're just going to go across on the back side here and cut these guys off. And we'll, we'll speed up the video so that you guys don't have to suffer through all of this cutting here. Okay, we're going to cut that straight off. Okay, just like so. And then we're going to strip these wires back. You don't need to strip much, just enough to, just enough to get some solder on there and solder those. And make sure you use the right gauge size. You don't want to cut too many strands off and then not have enough of the wire left to solder and make a good connection. You don't want to weaken that wire. You don't want to lose, you don't want to lose control of your robot during combat. So you want to make sure you keep those wires in good shape. Alright, two more. So, as you can see, they've retained pretty much uh, where they were because this is a ribbon cable. So, and they're going to stay in the position that they are. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come here and remove all these pins. So I have a set of tweezers and a pair of extra hands will come in handy. So I'm just going to hold this board here like so. I'm going to take my hot soldering iron, grab the pin on one side and just apply heat with the soldering iron and pull the pin out like so. Repeat that on the remaining pins. Okay just like so and you can see there's a little bit of solder left on the board uh, which is good so we're going to use that we're going to use that when we're reattaching the wires so now when I'm holding the board I'm making sure that I'm not clamping down on any of the traces meaning the copper that's under here it looks green because it's been coated, but this is copper under here. We don't want to scratch any of that or damage any of those, of those lines. And I'm going to refresh all of this solder up here just by using some solder, applying some solder on top. Now always make sure to wipe off some of the excess from the tip to keep your tip clean as you're doing this makes a better connection and just like so to provide a good area for these wires to solder back onto like so and while you're at it just make sure all the other solder joints see my this is our crystal and this is what gives us the clocking frequency uh, if you want to look that up later, we won't get into the clocking frequency right now. Uh, but this is what enables us to connect to our, to our controller at a certain frequency. So that looks pretty good there. And what we're going to do with the wire, we're going to tin the wire, which means we're going to apply solder, some solder to the wire to to strengthen and bring those strands together before we solder it to the board. It'll make it easier to solder to the board. Like so. So we're almost done at this point. The next step will be the last step, which is bringing the cable and the board together. So. 
we have tinned tin cable uh, you have solder on your board clamp it back in here and what we're going to do is go across and matching up my mark with the red wires I'm just going to lay the wire across heat the solder let the wire drop onto the pad and let let it cool off and you see that makes a connection good connection there I usually have the board held on, on two sides with my helping hands but uh, so that you can see a little better I'm just going to use one side on there so just go across like so and attach all the wires again we'll speed up the video so you guys don't have to suffer through all of this and be careful with having your fingers on the so I have my fingers back here to support the board because I'm only using one side by all means use the both sides of your holder I'm just doing this for clarity's sake so you guys can see a little better uh, but be careful because when you heat this up it does get very hot now experience tells me where to keep my fingers away so that I don't burn myself but uh, that's basically it so now you have your wire directly soldered to your receiver board and this can go right into the chest cavity and I'll show you that just now always tin your tip when you're not using it so that it doesn't oxidize the tip and that'll make it easier to solder the next time you're soldering so now we are going to see dun, 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 if this design has if this has been designed properly everything will fit inside of here so this is just going to drop into here like so we're gonna make a little Z bend like so and now we'll be able to plug in to our board while the board is inside there so that's how everything should fit in there and we'll we'll put the cover back on there to uh, test and make sure that this cable will will fit through there should fit through there loose so you should have a nice loose loose fit on there and all the cables will be secure after all of this comes together so this is where the head servo horn uh, is attached so you can get a, a, an idea of how that all goes together and this whole thing just snaps together like so just make sure you hold this cable in place and there you go it worked now the board's going to go back here all your servos plug into the board and we dress all the wires and away we go we have a nice uh nice robot and that's it that's how you modify your receiver to fit in into the chest of our david series fighting robot